Section on the Committee on Tourism and uh, Labor and Tourism. I am Representative Richard Lucci, the chair. Today is Tuesday, February 1st, 2022, 9 a.m. We're in conference room 312, and we are also doing a video conference for members and testifiers. Uh, with that, I'd like to uh, have the vice chair go over the rules for the committee hearing. In order to allow as many people to testify, there is a three minute time limit uh, for testimony. Please keep yourself muted and your video <laughs> off until it is your turn to testify. Uh, because morning hearings must adjourn prior to the noon floor session, uh, not all testifiers may have the opportunity to testify in that event. Please know that your written testimony will be considered by the committee. If you are having technical difficulties, please use the chat function to contact our technical staff. However, if you are disconnected, please rejoin and we will resume your testimony if time permits. In the event of a network failure, it may be necessary to reschedule the hearing or schedule a meeting for decision making. In that case, an appropriate notice will be posted. Please refrain from profanity or any uncivil language as such behavior would be grounds for removal and please avoid using any <coughs> trademark or copyright images. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Vice Chair. With that, uh, we will start the hearing with introductions of the committee members, starting with the Vice Chair. So can you provide your name and the district you represent? Sure. I'm Jackson Sayama. I represent House District 20, St. Louis Heights, Palo Alto, Kaimuki, William and Arise, and Manolani Heights. Okay, Representative Okimoto. Good morning. I'm Representative uh, Val Okimoto, represent District 36, which covers Mililani Malka, Mililani Town, and YPO Acres. Good morning. My name is Sean Quinlan. I represent District 47, uh, Wailua to Waihole. Representative Kobayashi. Good morning. It's Dale Kobayashi. I represent District 23, mostly Mineral Valley. Representative Holt. Thank you, Chair. Daniel Holt. I represent District 29, Kalihi, Palama, Ivile, and Chinatown. And via Zoom, we have Representative Velati. Aloha, good morning. Della Velati, I represent Makiki, Tentless, parts of Papakulea, Makali, and Manoa. And also we have Representative Takayama. Hi, good morning. Uh, Representative Greg Takayama representing Pearl City. And I am Richard Onishi, Chair. I represent District 3 on Hawaii Island. So all of our members are here present today. So we'll start with the first bill on the agenda. The first bill is HB 1404. It relates to human services, requires the Department of Human Services to compile information regarding the employers having employees who receive public assistance and to submit a report to the legislature on the 50 employers with the highest number of employees receiving public assistance. It requires the Department of Labor and Industrial Relations to share employment data with the Department of Human Services. So first up uh, to testify, we have Kathy Betts, Director of Department of Human Services. Uh, Good morning. Um, on behalf of Director Betts and the Department of Human Services, I'm Judy Moore Peterson, the MedQuest Administrator, and uh, we stand on a written testimony, appreciate, appreciating the intent, but offering some comments and concerns. Thank you, Director. Next, we have uh, Department of Labor and Industrial Relations here, uh, Relations, Director Ann Pereira Escaccio. Good morning, Director. Carol Nishi. Vice Chair Sayama, members of the House Committee on Labor and Tourism. My name is Annie Stakio, Director of Department of Labor. The department stands on its written testimony with concerns, and I am here for any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Director. Are there any further people there uh, on Zoom who want to testify? Okay, if not, members, are there any questions? Carol Nishi, can I ask a question? Yep. Oh, is, thank you. This is a question for um, Director Moore Peterson. My my question is: Is there a sense uh, of how many individuals are covered both by their health employer sponsored insurance and Medicaid? 
Um, we do not have ready information for that. And so I can, I can go back and ask my team if we uh, have, have that information, but we're, we're not able to uh, necessarily know uh, even if they are signed up with us and they have have that information, we don't necessarily know how many um, ha also have health insurance through their through their employer. Um, again, we'll we'll go back and take a look because as I'm talking, I'm going, oh wait, I think we we might have a, a contract with a vendor who has information around a third party a liability, third party insurance, and that might be a way that we can get at least get a sense of that. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Chair Onishi, if I could just comment, I think having this information is really good because we know that if we do know that people in fact are getting jobs for uh, insurance purposes, it, 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 that begs an interesting question about you know, the, the, the intersection between wages and um, benefits. And, and just it's just because I know also Medicaid, is, that, is Medicaid also income eligibility requirements as well? So there's an interesting interplay between jobs and benefits and what people might be working for. In fact, they may not be working for wages, but they're working the hours to get the benefits and that's more valuable to them. Is that an accurate assessment, Ms. Peterson? Uh, thank you for that question. Um, I think, uh, I mean, it is interesting uh, information. People, people do take jobs or work um, in order to get access to employer-sponsored health insurance. Medicaid is, is going to be the payer of last resort. So if they have access to other insurance, that other insurance will pay first. But you are also accurate in that um, Medicaid and the MedQuest program is a means-tested program. In other words, it's based on people's income and their, their household income. I will note, however, that um, our, our federal our, our income limits for uh, children are actually quite high. They're close to the median average for a family of four. So uh, it is possible that the families might have their child covered and have access and ha have other coverage for their children, um, even though they're, they wouldn't be qualified as, as what you might be thinking as as like really low income. Very interesting. Thank you. Thank you, um, Ms. Peterson. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Are there any other representatives with questions? Okay, if not, we'll move on to the next bill. The next bill is House Bill 1787, relating to persons with disabilities. It established employment first as a state policy with respect to persons with disabilities require state and county agencies to implement this policy in hiring and all programs and services administered or funded by the state or counties. Applies employment first principles to Medicaid, home and community-based waiver programs. First up to testify, we have Department of Labor and Industrial Relations, Ann Pereira Expascio, Director, Good morning again, Chair Onishi, Vice Chair Sayama, and members of the House Committee on Labor and Tourism. Thank you for allowing me to testify this morning. The DLIR stands on its written testimony with comments, and I am available for questions if you have any. Thank you. Thank you, Director. Uh, next up, State Council on Developmental Disabilities, Daintree Bar Bartolos Bartolos. Good morning, Chair Onishi and committee members. Thank you so much for this opportunity. My name is Dane Chibar Toldis. I'm the executive administrator for the Hawaii State Council on Developmental Disabilities. With me is Kylie Swan, self-advocate. And we are standing on strong support of this measure and we're here to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next up, we have the Department of Human Services, State of Hawaii, Kathy Betts, Betts Director. Good morning. This is Iva Kane representing Kathy Betts from the Department of Human Services. I am the Assistant Division Administrator for Vocational Rehabilitation, standing on written testimony and here to answer questions if you have any. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we also have testimony uh, for people who are not going to be on the Zoom. 
Hawaii Disabilities Rights Center, uh, Louis Este in support, Rainbow Family 808, Mike Goluch, Senior in support, Hawaii Self Advocacy Advisory Council, Bay Torres, Vice Chair in support, and Whole Life, James Kilgore, Executive Director in support. Is there anyone else uh, there on Zoom who wants to testify on this bill? Okay, if not, members, are there any questions? Okay, if not, uh, we'll be moving on to the next bill. So the next bill is House Bill 1789 relating to collective bargaining. It establishes that the representative of labor on the Hawaii Labor Relations Board be a person selected by a majority of the exclusive representatives of the collecting bargain of the collective bargaining units. So first up, uh, let's see. Uh, here to testify on Zoom is Hawaii Government Employees Association Executive Director Randy Pereira. Good morning, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the Labor Committee. Michelle Kurihara Klein on behalf of our Executive Director Randy Pereira and the Hawaii Government Employees Association. We stand on our written testimony in strong support of this measure. You have our written testimony before you, um, as well as we appreciate the committee's consideration in moving an identical measure um, to this bill last session. Unfortunately, the governor issued a veto and the legislature did not include it for an override. Um, but I don't want to um, reiterate all of the points. I think this is an important measure that will help to right the balance on the labor relations board. The labor unions should have a stronger say in who their labor representative is at the labor relations board. And I would be happy to answer any questions that you or the committee may have. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, next up, Hawaii Rela uh, Labor Relations Board, Chairperson Marcus Oshiro. Good morning, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, Midori Hirai on behalf of Marcus Oshiro. Um, we will primarily stand on our written testimony, just raising particularly the constitutional concerns that were raised about a similar, a similar provision last year regarding the um, governor's uh, constitutional role being reduced to a ministerial requirement, um, as well as the question about the language, uh, the, the language as currently written could be construed to lead to a single um, exclusive representative being able to install a member of their choosing without consultation to the other exclusive representatives. And I'm available to answer any questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Next up, we have Hawaii Firefighters Association, Celeste Snip. Good morning. This is Celeste Snip. Um, we're in full in support of this bill. If you have any questions, if you could uh, provide, we would provide answers to any of the questions you may have. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Others who have submitted testimony Moni, but has not, uh, indicated they will not be here to testify. We have the Office of Collective Bargaining, Riker Wada, Chief Negotiator, in opposition. We have the United Public Workers, Ashmi Local 4, uh, 646, UPW, Dan Kochi, in support. We have a uh, State of Hawaii Organization of Police Officers, Shofo, Robert Kavako, president in support. We have uh, individual Vicki Parker Cam in support. She's an educator. And Department of Budget and Finance, Craig e. Rye, director with comments. Is there anyone else here to testify on this bill? Okay, if not members, are there any questions? 
Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, Missy. Okay, we have Hawaii State Teachers Association, Mitzi Higa. Sorry, Mitzi, for skipping you. No, you it's there? okay. <laughs> Aloha, Chair Onishi. And I'm speaking for Wilbert Hulk, our Executive Director of Hawaii State Teachers Association. We'll just stand on our testimony in support. We believe labor should represent labor, and we need a democratic process to do that. Thank you. Thank you, Mitzi. Again, I apologize for skipping you. <laughs> okay. Uh, Anyone else there to testify? Okay, if not members, do you have any questions? Okay, if not, let's move on to the final bill. So the final bill is HB 1839, <laughs> relating to transit accommodation tax. It makes camper vans a type of transit accommodation, the rental of which is subject to the transit accommodation tax. First up to testify is Department of Taxation, Isaac Choi, Director. Yes, Chair. This is Jonathan White on behalf of the Director of Tax. The department will stand on its written testimony providing comments on the bill. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, next up, John DeFries, Hawaii Tourism Authority. Aloha nui kakou, Ilihia Johnson here on behalf of John DeFries at the Hawaii Tourism Authority. Chair Onishi, Vice Chair Sayama, members, aloha nui kakou. We stand on our written testimony on this matter. We understand and appreciate the intent of this measure to establish a framework to tax camper van accommodations in the same manner as other accommodations. Um, our concern is that while our community-driven destination management action plans did not specifically discuss camper vans, what came through loud and clear was a desire to manage visitor accommodations, um, taking steps to limit those non-traditional accommodations, such as illegal short-term vacation rentals, and managing where folks stay. And so we understand that the specific regulation of camper van parking is under the purview of the counties, but to the extent that this measure would legitimize those camper vans as accommodations, it would run counter to the feedback we received from the community through that destination management action plan process. We are in touch with the counties, working with them to understand what measures are currently in place, what kind of rules they're looking at, and what sort of regulation measures they would need to put into place to manage this uh, emerging phenomenon. Um, but I would like to thank the legislature for kind of leaning forward on this emerging phenomenon. Um, and we're here for any questions. Mahalo nui. Thank you. Uh, next, Hawaii Tax Foundation of Hawaii, Tom Yamachika. Is that it? Okay. <clears throat> um, other uh, persons who submitted testimony Hawaii County, uh, County Council, <laughs> County of Mo, uh, Maui, Alice Lee, Council Chair in support, Hawaii Lodging and Tourism Association, Mufi Hanneman, the President and CEO in opposition, uh, and the Maui Hotel and Lodging Association, Lisa Paulson, uh, Executive Director uh, with comments. Uh, is there anyone else there to testify? Uh, if not, members, do you have any questions? Chair, I have. Yes. Yeah, Vice my, Chair Sayama. My question's for uh, HTA uh, Ilihia. Uh, so I, I was hope to get a little bit of clarity on your testimony. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned that this bill runs counter to the feedback that you receive from the DMAPS uh, process from the community, uh, but you also say that there was a strong desire to limit non-traditional accommodations, which I think camper vans will be included in that. So uh, I'm just a little confused as to what your position is on uh, this uh, bill and its intent. Mahalo for the question, Rep, Vice Chair. Um, to the extent that this measure would legitimize camper vans as an accommodation without without the requisite regulation at the county level, as far as where they can park, where's appropriate for them to be, 
it would be legitimizing a type of accommodation without regulation on the other end. So that's our concern. Um, if there's a way to time this so that the counties have a chance to put those kinds of regulations into place um, at the same time that this bill would effectively legitimize camper vans as an accommodation, then certainly we can be supportive of that. Um, I hope that answers your question. Okay, no, it does. Thank you, Yuli. Uh, no further questions, Chair. Okay, members, oh, any other questions? Okay, so I, I have a follow-up. Oh, sorry. Oh, Rep. Malati, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Chair, just along these same lines, uh, to follow up on the uh, questioning of Rep. Sayama for Mr. Johnson. So if something like an amendment was made to the definition of camper van and, and audit added something like, means a self-propelled motor vehicle, dot, 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 that shall only be allowed in the event of county regulations, would that be something acceptable? So we set it, we start to set into motion because what I'm concerned about is we know these things are happening. That's why this bill is coming forward. So while we wait and wait, uh, it's gonna be the same situation like the Airbnb and then it's gonna get out of control. So is that something that we could do? Mahalo for that question, Rep. Um, something like that, yes, would help. And certainly, again, we very much appreciate the intent of the legislature in getting ahead of this before it gets to a it's, um, you know, uncontrolled. From the counties has been you know, they're only seeing bits and pieces. It's not, they aren't seeing numbers yet, but certainly uh, uh, the potential is there. As we saw with uh, an amendment like that and working closely with the counties to ensure their rules and regulations are in place, that would address our concerns. Mahalo. Thank you, thank hey, you, uh, Chair. Yeah, Ilihia, I just wanted to let you know that uh, a portion of your testimony or your reply, you were breaking up. So it was very hard to understand. But I also do have a follow-up question. So is it the position of HTA that the legislature wait on regulating or, or collecting PAT tax <laughs> on camper, van, or, on, uh, camper vans um, to allow the counties to establish a regulatory regime, um, which we didn't do that for short-term vacation rentals. So we collected PAT tax on short-term vacation rentals, even though the counties did not have in place a, the required regime to manage it, or uh, we're not managing at all, even if they had a regime in place. So that's the position of HTA, is that it was okay for short-term vacation rentals, but this type of accommodations, the legislature should not take any action until the counties have addressed it. And there are four counties and, you know, they may, they do it on their own time and not uh, all together in one uh, legislative action. So I just wanted clarification. So is that the HTA position? Chair Onishi, mahalo for the question, the opportunity to clarify and my apologies for the technical difficulties with my connection. I think the lesson of the illegal short-term vacation rentals is that these kinds of regulations and taxations are great when they happen hand in hand. I, I agree with uh, Rep. Pilati's suggestion of inserting that language, making that amendment, uh, perhaps not waiting, but certainly making sure that we're headed in the same direction. Okay, and who would be the persons that would be required to ensure that the counties are happy? Is that HTA? I can huddle up with the team and see if we have any suggestions for the committee and we can bring that back to you. Okay. 
Thank you. Members, any further uh, questions? Okay. okay, if not, uh, we'll recess for decision making.
This is the Committee on Labor and Tourism. We're calling our meeting back to order for decision making. So on the first bill, HB 1404, in light of the testimony provided by DHS and DLIR, we're going to be deferring this bill. Uh, on the second bill, HB 1787, we're passing the bill out with a few technical amendments needed for clarity, consistency, and style, as well as defecting the date to December 25th, 2040. Members, do you have any questions? Okay. If not, Vice Chair for the vote. Uh, HB 1787, uh, Chair's recommendation passed with amendments. Uh, chair, Vice Chair, vote aye. Uh, oh, sorry. Representative uh, Bilotti. Aye. Representative Holt. Aye. Representative Kobayashi. Aye. Representative Quinlan. Aye. Representative Takayama. Aye. Representative Okimoto. Aye. Thank you, Chair. Your recommendation is adopted. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next bill, HB 1789. We'll be passing the bill out with some technical amendments by changing the word nominate to a point on page two, line 11. This is for clarity and consistency. And we do appreciate the concerns raised in testimonies that we have received. Therefore, we're going to put in a defective date of December 25th, 2040, to allow the measure to move forward and allow further conversation. Members, any questions? Okay, if not, Vice Chair for the vote. HB 1789, Chair's uh, recommendation is to pass with amendments. Uh, Chair, Vice Chair, vote aye. Uh, any votes well, with reservations? Any no votes? Thank you, Chair. Your recommendation is adopted. Thank you, Vice Chair. And the final bill, HB 1839, will be taking the suggested amendments noted by GOTAX, including changing the effective date to January 1st, 2023. And, you know, noting the concerns of uh, the members in regards to whether or not this should be taxed. Uh, it is an accommodation and we're gonna be moving this along uh, just to you know, have that discussion. Uh, we, as in the, uh, you know, the, the experience that I've had in the short-term vacation rentals, we were taxing it to begin with or requiring taxing, but the counties did not have the regulatory process or enforcement in place to effectively um, address the problems that were created in the community. And this is an attempt to look at this issue uh, before it gets out of hand in communities. So um, that being said, members, you guys have any questions on the recommendation for the bill? Okay, if not, please share for the vote. HB 1839, Chair's recommendation is to pass with amendments. Chair, Vice Chair, vote aye. Any members voting with reservations? reservations. reservations. Representative Quinlan with reservations. Representative Okimoto with reservations. Any members voting no? Sing. Oh, oh, sorry. Is that uh, Representative Takayama? No, no, no. That was. Oh, sorry. okay. <laughs> I jumped ahead. Okay. Uh, okay. Seeing uh, no, no votes. Uh, thank you, Chair. Your recommendation is adopted. Thank you. Thank you, members. Meeting is adjourned.